takes us to a Salvation Army in Ama, which is a neighborhood in Copenhagen, Denmark, as we go hunting for my next project piece. I've been to this thrift store a couple times and what I like about it is that it's a little bit bigger than some of the other thrift stores in the city. The thrift stores in the city itself tend to be kind of small but this one out in Ama is pretty big and it has everything from furniture to household to knickknacks and you name it. I was happy to find my next project piece which is this cute little upholstered stool and for 100 kroner or about 16 US dollars that's not too bad. stool home with me on the metro like I do with a lot of my other furniture pieces and I set about taking the old upholstery off. I was using subpar tools because I didn't have proper upholstery tools here with me so I'm using a tiny screwdriver and a pair of pliers. 437,000 rusted staples later and I finally got the old upholstery off. <laughs> this vintage table in and in the same Salvation Army and for 25 kroner or about four US dollars I thought it would be perfect for this project. I will be the first to admit that I am not really that great at upholstery but here's what I do know. I do know that it's easiest if you start by putting one staple in each of the four sides, that kind of gives you a guide, and then pull your fabric to the corners as you staple it. That takes up the slack. I don't know what it is, but man, I struggle with the corners on all of my upholstery and more often than not, I have to actually go watch somebody else's YouTube video on how to do the corners. I'm just gonna go ahead and point out that nasty burn that I have on my hand. Let's just say that I am better at painting furniture than I am at using the curling wand on my hair. We have had some unbelievably blue skies here in Copenhagen, and I love the juxtaposition of this warm, salmony, peachy, orangey, reddish color against the blue sky. And so that's where I got my color inspiration for for this project. So while my base coat of blue iris is drying, I'm gonna mix up some salt wash and queen bee to create a paste that I will do a raised stencil with. I don't really measure, I just put a glob of paint and then a scoop of the salt wash and mix it up until I have a nice full bodied medium that I can use to do my raised stenciling. Stenciling is one of my all-time favorite things to do, especially when I know I'm going to do a layered and wet distress technique because it really, it's like magic. It, it's amazing that when I start layering different paint colors on over a raised design and then do my wet distress, how those layers of different color come through. And it is really quite simple, but is so effective in creating just a, an amazingly unique finish. water lily as my next layer because I'm trying to kind of keep with that sky feeling plus blue iris and water lily is one of my all-time favorite color combinations so after that water lily is all dry now I'm gonna do a blended finish and so I am using fire starter and petticoat pink which I know when blended together when wet creates this really great salmon kind of color So you will 
notice that the DIY paint dries relatively light and very chalky looking, stick around until we get to the part where I wax and you will see how the colors all come back to life after it's been top coated. So when I wet distress, I actually like to spray my cloth first and then do the wet distress, but you could certainly go ahead and spray your piece too. I just feel like I have a little bit more control when just my cloth is wet, but if you're struggling or aren't able to distress as much as you want, go ahead and spray your piece with some water too. So just when I thought I was done, I realized that I missed painting an entire leg. My pro tip for you for this video is for small pieces, turn them upside down and paint them because you are less likely to miss an entire leg like I did. For more pro tips, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. To find the full list of all of the products that I used for today's project, check out the description box below and I will have everything listed for you. So to be completely honest with you, that was not my first fabric choice. But after I got the stool painted, I realized that the peach that I painted the stool matched the peach color in the fabric perfectly and went with this one instead. And cheers, you made it through my video. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. And if you're so inclined, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to. Thank you so much. Bye.